This is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs the Playbook. I am so excited because I love when I get a real entrepreneur, someone that started from the grassroots up, plus a sports background. Aaron Kay, he's the chairman of the Alkaline Water Company. They have two extraordinary lines that are doing so well, one in the traditional alkaline, two in the CBD space. We're going to get into that. But first, Aaron, I want to welcome you to the playbook. Welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited to do this. You know, I am such a big fan of Alkaline. Um, I've done a lot of research. And what cannot live in Alkaline was one of my biggest impetuses of why I thought it was such an interesting play in, in the water space when I first got introduced to it years ago. Uh, a friend of mine cured cancer, or, you know, th that's the representation that he has made to me. He, uh, and he's a famous CEO, uh, Brian Smith, CEO uh, of Ugg Boots, the founder of Ugg Boots that he sold. Yeah. Uh, you, you should get him as an endorser because he literally studied alkaline, got me involved, and uh, been a huge proponent. Uh, and now the CBD has come out. What a great combination. You know, where and how, from a professional soccer player, do you kind of build a journey or a playbook to be the chairman of a NASDAQ company in, you know, such a specific space of alkaline water? Yeah, I mean, the journey's been long to get to the Alkaline Company. I mean, I played soccer professionally, played for Canada, played for the, the 86ers, which was the predecessor to now the Whitecaps in the MLS. And then, um, you know, I went through a journey of a couple different businesses, entered into the capital markets in right when the financial crisis came, so really bad timing, but learned a ton. And then the opportunity with the Alkaline Company came along in 2013, where I went into the company first as an investor really before they'd even really started to really sell a lot of products. And that's when the first opportunity came in, invested, really worked closely with a lot of the same existing team that we had. And four years ago, joined the board, went chairman, focused, created a strategy around getting listed on NASDAQ. I take on a lot of the capital markets responsibilities. So built up our shareholder base, raised a lot of capital for the company. But I've also been around that cannabis industry since it, it was born out of Canada. And that's where I've, my influence has come on some of the branding strategy into the CBD side. And that's really my experience. And a lot of, I guess, my influence in, in the company comes from. You know, the soul of success comes from a lot of on the field behaviors, disciplines, and strategies. You know, when I see a lot of chairmen and CEOs of significant companies like yours, it's really interesting because I tell people all the time, I was an average division three football, American football player. Obviously, yeah. my in the Hall of Fame very, I'm sure as a Canadian, you know, probably the most well-known Canadian football player. It's interesting because I say, you know, what's funny is I learned as much as Warren learned, even though I'm not nearly as good. And I would attribute most of the things that I do that have made me a success from the on the field, teamwork, leadership, discipline, habits, not quitting being the number one. You said it's been a long journey. I think more than anything, the consistent, persistent behavior that's taught on the field. What are some of the things, you know, as a professional athlete, not an average division three guy like me, but a professional athlete, what are some of the things that you believe you learn from playing those sports that far exceed any MBA from, you know, an Ivy League school? Yeah, I have, and my journey is kind of cool in the sense that I went from professional sports and then I went right into a personal training uh, franchise that we grew and that was what I was alluding to earlier with Gene Smith and Ohio State and and his son-in-law was my partner right so and hey Gene hope you, you watch one day because I mean he's a great leader oh, no, no, no. You, he's gonna be on someday he doesn't watch we'll, we'll let him on someday yeah yeah exactly but he did not, he's you a, Gene Smith on the playbook that's awesome <laughs> totally he's a like he was a great leader and then through going from professional sports into the personal training world you had to learn to function within a team and it becomes a cliche in sports, but then when I went from being in my 20s in personal training environments, very much like team sports, still running a business into the capital markets, you started to see how some teams would falter or they'd be split up. And that, that was the number one thing that's always really, really helped me. At the same time, making decisions and being able to be accountable, which you know a lot of people can sometimes within a team environment, they shy away from. And then when you, when you brought up that the first point with leadership, well, anybody who can't be accountable, be honest, and have a little bit of humility is going to really struggle in a big team in a growing corporate environment for sure. You know, it's interesting. I've learned to enjoy soccer when I worked in Korea 
and we had the World Cup in Korea, and uh, Korea actually went to the quarterfinals and did exceptionally yeah. well. But I really learned the game being an American football fan. I really learned the game at that time. And one of the things that's interesting, being a Canadian, being a soccer player, uh, Wayne Gretzky is probably the w most well-known Canadian athlete, you know, next to my Warren Moon. Uh, but he has a famous quote about skating to where the puck is going to be. And looking at your businesses with the two line uh, that you have, and I, you know, don't want to screw up the exact lines because there's a lot of letters and numbers in there. So if you can explain, I, I'm looking and studying your company and saying, wow, you know, Aaron really is skating to where the puck's going to be. He's in, you know, really a visionary in, in what you've done, including getting into the capital markets with this type of product. So, you know, is, is that intentional or is it something that's trained to kind of skate to where the puck's going to be? I think what was neat is uh, when we got involved with the Alkaline Company, my, a partner and I, I mean, nobody knew what the Alkaline water was. Back then, everything about Alkaline was about batteries. So the pH and the Alkaline diet was starting to become a really, really big trend. And everybody was doing it in the small balls. Like this is what everybody was selling back then. Nobody said, why don't we do this in the big bottles, in the, in the bulk category. That was all kind of cheaper, cheaper water. And it caught on. And that's how our brand was originally built. And you got to give a lot of the credit to Ricky Wright, the, the CEO. He was originally the CFO. And through time, he graduated into the CEO position, which made a lot of sense um, based on his skill set, especially operationally. So we did that on the big bottles. Um, and that was kind of the first thing that we did. We built up our brand from there. And then we've added the small bottles, the flavors, and then into kind of the CBD. And what's the name of the CBD product? A88 CBD. And, and that, that was a tough one. We went through a lot of different exercises because we wanted the association with our brand, Alkaline 88 and the company. But at the same time, you can't call it that because Alkaline 88 speaks to the specific makeup of the water. Um, so we went out, we did some studies, we talked to all of our consumers, we talked to supermarkets, the curious all across the country. And everybody said, you're going to have a lot of brand pull with associating the family. And they've been right. Right, it's a new product that we've launched, but if you think of the cannabis sector, it went up and came down really quickly, and a lot of brands flamed out. Why? They didn't have legacy and history and trust. We have that. We have that with our waters. We've been at it for eight years. We're one of the leaders in the, the, the premium category. Makes sense for CBD, especially with as we've rolled out ingestibles, which people are gonna be not just rubbing on their skin, but putting into their, into their system. Now, this is probably a tougher question being a public entity and representations that can and can't be made but can you give some of the benefits that you're allowed to say i mean i, I probably can add some of my own perceptions without any uh problems of of, uh, of elite illegalities of a public company but you know i'm really curious how you know number one because a lot of the public doesn't know the benefits of that ph alkaline uh recipe that the normal water company the normal water has but also how CBD now enhances what you guys have been doing for eight years. Right, I mean, the, you can read online for sure. I do gotta be a little bit careful because for sure we've never had any issues with FDA and health claims because you can't do it for marketing. And that's with both products. They're very similar from that standpoint. But you can read online and you'll hear people talk about acid flux reflux. You'll, you'll hear people talk about cancer. You'll. Um, you know, obviously then you take it and you look at, and the best way to use it is actually speak about sports. Like look at what the NBA and, and a lot of the NFL players are doing with respect to the type of waters they drink. Some of them drink our competitors, but some of them also do additives to increase the pH level, electrolytes into their, into their products. And those are definite benefits for hydration quicker, right? And that's important with sports and performance. You bring right? up, yeah, and you bring up a good point about competition. You know, I, when I got out of law school, I was in a hyper-competitive situation with Westlaw and Lexus. And I always loved it because, it, you know, being an abundant person, it educated the marketplace. The market is so big for water and it's still growing. Um, what is your philosophy about competition? For the alkaline water space in that category, the more the better. And why? Because in, when we started, it was a small category that Global Beverage looked at and said, fad, is this just another health fad? Is it real? And over time now, if you go and look at the competitive space, so Smart Water, everybody probably that's watching knows Smart Water, they launched an alkaline water last year. 
And we were like, awesome. Because they're not, they're a competitor for sure in the space, but we're doing different things than them. But what did that do? Well, that valley, you know who owns them, Coke. So that validates exactly what we did as the kind of the entrepreneur and the pioneer in the, in this sector. So we, we liked it. Yeah, I, I have the same uh, philosophy. Uh, last question, you know, in a situation that we're in with compressed uncertainty and health now has become a greater concern, right? I was with Deepak Chopra and he talked about the biggest change that he sees is that people for the first time worldwide can't take their own existence for granted. And when people yeah. can't take their own existence for granted, I'm going to use a statistic. I know it's not true. You can fix it. But, you know, I know that over 80% of our body is water, right? And I'm a yeah. human somewhere in there. I always say the only statistic I know to be true, a few of them, 99% of all statistics are made up. 100% of the things that you do now get done. And 100% of short putts never go in. Those are three I know statistics that are true. <laughs> I'm a good putter though. I can okay. I get the short putts for sure. If you think maybe I got to work out, but yeah. There's a Vancouver guy. Uh, yeah. But to that end, you know, the majority of our body is water. And I am a huge person about water because not only, you know, is it such a big part of us, but it's a conductor of energy. Right? No, nothing conducts electricity and energy better than water. And if you are an abundant person that believes the universe, the light, the love, the lessons come through us, the better the, the water is in your system, you know, I, I think it has, uh, you know, this direct effect on who we are if we were so much water. You know, for you, uh, understanding your space and tying that in where the pandemic that we're in right now and this uncertainty has question our human existence. Have you seen a trend of greater concern about water in itself and what types of water we're putting into our system or has, has it dipped because of the economy? We, we definitely haven't seen a dip. I mean, you know, we are fortunately, because there's so many businesses on the other side of this that have way more uncertainty. We've seen a spike in sales. We put out updates on our last couple of months and they were significant, it's like almost double. In, in month over month. So that's, po that's positive for sure. I do think the consumer trend was going there anyways, with respect, especially to bottled water and water in general. And I think that's why the category continues to grow. I think premium water is what people really care about. And I think with what's going on in the world and the curiosity around the pandemic and how are we all gonna come out on that other side, I think people are gonna become even more health conscious. And let's hope they do, not just about water, but about everything, because it's a good little, you know, if, if you're going to take something out of the pandemic, it's, there's things you can't take that are going to be a positive or a wake up call for some people. What's the um, best piece of water advice that you can give to people? You know, I, I tell people all the time, and maybe this is wrong. I say, you want to change your life? Say thank you every day. Drink a gallon of water every day. Uh, exercise a minimum of an hour a day. Uh, and tell your mom that you're healthy, happy, appreciated lover. On the water front, What's the best advice that you can give people uh, concerning how much or when or whatever to drink uh, alkaline water? I'll give you my personal view on water in not like in it, in there is science behind it in the sense that one of the biggest fallacies I think when people sit down for food, a meal, a restaurant or whatever, is they get a glass of water. What's the second question a waiter or waitress asks you? What type of water do you want, still or sparkling? Well, a lot of the benefits behind CBD and alkaline water is to help with inflammation, anti-inflammation, in fact. You should not be consuming a large quantity of water when you're digesting food. And if you think about how much your day is spent eating food, it disrupts your, your digestive system. And it, it, it can slow you down. And, and you want to be drinking water or stop drinking water usually about half an hour down before you, you have a meal and wait after because you want your food to be processed. And you want to get all the enzymes and the vitamins and the minerals out of it. So... Yeah, it's, you know, you kind of got to study that yourself because everybody's yeah. body reacts differently, right? But that's kind of a general rule of thumb that, uh, that I've been living with. Um, I haven't been doing it, probably been doing it for two years. So I, I knew I could get the nugget out of you about water. That's awesome. I certainly appreciate it. Well, your company and you are doing extraordinary well. Aaron Kay, I really appreciate it. He's chairman of the Alkaline Water Company. Two great lines of products. You got to check them out if you're not a fan of Alkaline Water just try it you'll taste the difference and feel the difference that's from dave Meltzer, who uses and drinks it and now i'm not going to drink it as much while i'm eating
because I'm going to try that out. As well. Aaron Kay, thank you so much for joining me, Dave Meltzer, here on The Playbook.